A fruit bowl contains three apples and two nectarines. Jason selects a fruit from the bowl and eats it. Later he selects a second piece of fruit and eats that as well. Find the probability that Jason eats the same fruit both times, or Jason eats at least one apple. Okay, so drawing a tree diagram. So when Jason goes to the bowl, he can choose either an apple or a nectarine. The probability of getting an apple is 3 out of 5, and the probability of getting a nectarine is 2 out of 5. Then he can choose, uh, a, a set. having chosen an apple first of all, then he could choose an apple the second time round or a nectarine. However, there are now only four pieces of fruit in the bowl. He's already eaten one apple, so this one will become two, but he still has two nectarines to choose from. Having et a nectarine the first time, he could then eat an apple or a nectarine. So therefore, there are only four pieces of fruit in the bowl. However, here there are still three apples, and there are only uh, one nectarine to choose from. So, same idea as before, to get the probabilities, we will multiply across the arm. These are called like dependent events. So the probability of an apple and an apple will now be three out of fifths times two fourths, which is six out of 20. And then the probability of, sorry, an apple and a nectarine will be three-fifths times two-fourths. So again, that gives you six out of 20. And the uh, a nectarine followed by an apple, so the probability of a nectarine and an apple will be two-fifths times three-quarters, which again is six out of 20. And then the probability of the chance of getting a nectarine and a nectarine will be two-fifths times one quarter, which is 2 out of 20. Notice that 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 2 makes 20, so it's 20 out of 20, so these add up to 1. Again, these are called mutually exclusive events, i.e. if one of them happens, the other three events will not happen, and the probability sum will be equal to 1. These events here even though we multiplied, are called dependent events. This event does affect this event. This is called conditional probability. Right. So now we use the tree diagram to answer the question. So probability that Jason eats the same fruit. Well, he can eat the same fruit here or here. So that's going to be 6 out of 20 plus 2 out of 20, which makes 8 out of 20, which makes 2 fifths, cancelling down by 4. And then B, the probability elite eats at least one apple is going to be 1 minus the probability he eats no apple. So here he eats both nectarines, so he doesn't eat an apple here. So it's going to be 1 minus... 2 out of 20, which gives you 18 out of 20, which is 9 out of 10. Now, you could have calculated part B by just adding these three up as well, these three here up as well. But when the diagram is much more complicated, it's far easier to use the idea 1 minus the probability that eats no apples. Okay, so this has been a video to show you how to use conditional probability with dependent events on a tree diagram. I hope you've understood and I thank you very much for watching.